you know, part of me wants uh, to do like my own playthrough of Sonic Sonic Adventure Ah Adventure Two and do a commentary of it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know you why. Should. What do you mean I should? Why? Because if you want to, then you should. Ah. Yeah, but what do I get out of it? Doing something you wanted to do. Yeah, but why should the internet deserve it? Why should the internet deserve anything? <laughs> oh, you don't say that. <laughs> We're part of the internet. Ah. Uh. Oh, there we go. Nice. This game's actually quite fun to control in a weird way. Oh, where am I now? It seems like one of those games that you don't necessarily have fun as you're playing it, but when <laughs> you finish, you're just like... You can be pretentious well, about was... it afterwards. No, but like, when you're finished with it, it's like... Oh, that was that was an experience. That was quite interesting. That thing is... So I feel oh, like that's oh, the sort of thing... That's the sort of feeling I get from Don't Starve, just... I wouldn't call it fun, but it's engaging. What would you call fun? Oh. Well, I would call Animal Crossing fun, but I think I've talked enough about it. I don't know why I thought it was a good idea to stick it on to stick a spear in that. Also, hey, wait, where'd it go? Oh, great! It just dumped me in a nest. Oh, this is terrible. I thought I'd be playing better than this. Seems a rather confusing game. It is confusing. It has given me no direction. And to be honest, I do kind of like that. Mm -hmm. I know it'll be like very frustrating and alienating for a lot of people, but I actually kind of like games that are just like... Well, isn't that what a lot of classic games are? That they don't give you much direction, but you just kind of have to... Uh, well, I mean, they did. They, they, sort of thing. they didn't give you direction in the games, but they was that stuff was all in the instruction manual back in the day. Like, if you had, a, if you got a, like original Legend of Zelda, they say that game like tells you nothing and just lets you go and explore. But if you read the game manual, it would tell you where it would tell you about every single enemy in the game. It would tell you exactly what they do and like what their weaknesses are. Like, even if you leave the title screen long enough, it'll tell you every single item you're gonna find in the game. Yeah. Yeah, people seem to just remember that as far as they spelled Ganon's name wrong. <laughs> well, people only remember what they want to remember. People will make out, like, the reveal of Samus being a woman as a big deal when really, like, no one cared. It's just something people, like, talk about, like, as if it was. Because I'd be like, you, you, you'll you just hit, read those articles or see those videos where they're like, Samus being a woman, um, when it was revealed at the end of the game that Samus was a woman, players were shocked. As if, I'd like, imagine it would be more, less the fact that she was a woman, more the way they played it off, because was it not that you had to beat the game under specific circumstances? Uh, yes. I mean, the game was also purposely deceptive about Samus's, um gender which is something that they the people neglect to say because if you read the instruction manual like they do everything in their power to convince you that that samus is a man they even outright lie to you every time they every time they talk about samus they use male pronouns i'm just remembering a post i saw i can't remember what it was on but it was basically just mentioning that time that apparently there was a manga that there was a scene of Samus basically fantasizing about having a woman on each arm, but it was before the reveal that she was a woman. <laughs> so they accidentally made her a lesbian. Hey man, representation. <laughs> Look at that. They had their first... Ah! They had their first a LGBT character. Accidentally being ahead of your time. There you go, and they didn't even have to make a fuss about it. 
here. Oh yeah, that was it. I went up here. Oh. Um. Right. Okay. Ah! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> it's a good thing you're a blob, or that could have hurt. I caught onto a, a ledge right before I hit the ground. Man, I love the Metroid games. <sighs> oh, I'm bad at this. Oh, I'm really this bad at this. This is not me playing, or you'd just be frustrated watching. If it was you playing, I would have killed myself by now. I'd have probably killed myself more times than I've gotten You've... this character killed. <laughs> I was gonna say, you've killed yourself plenty already. Oh, give us another topic. You seen anything good lately? Um... Well, I have been watching a show about Schoolgirls making an anime. Oh, I did it. You did it. Oh, yes. Keep your hands off as you can. Such a good show. It was good. And still somehow one of science... Oh! <laughs> How dare it? Kill it. <laughs> it electrocuted me. Kill it. Uh, it's gone. Oh. I, I ain't gonna chase after it. I don't want to risk it. Because not gonna lie, I thought that killed Last me at first. Last time you did that, you ate a thing's baby and then you died. Okay, to be fair, that wasn't my fault. The baby was just... If if they, they, if it didn't want to be eaten, it shouldn't have been so delicious. <laughs> was, the, was the baby's fault. Maybe if your babies weren't so delicious, Slugcat wouldn't have to eat them. Oh, that thing's gonna kill me. Where am I? What if it goes the wrong way? I don't know what's deadly and what's not in this world. Can that thing kill me or is it just gonna stun me? Yeah, tell me about keep your hands off as you can. Uh. Well, it's a really cool show about a girl who wants to make anime and a friend who's very business minded. What? So, even though she doesn't actually care about anime, she's very good as a producer because she keeps them on track. I'm just getting annoyed at these fly guys um, attacking Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. <sighs> oh. Oh, come on! Well, I did tell you this game could be unfair sometimes. Okay. But yeah, they meet another girl who turns out to be a super famous model, but wants to be an animator. I like how the character that's supposed to be a super famous model in that show isn't, like, over-the-top hot. Well, she is a schoolgirl. It would be kind of weird if she was. I mean, have you seen anime? Like I'm applauding True. it. I'm applauding it for like. Oh, I think that's the rain coming. How can you tell? Because the screen's shaking. Oh uh, yeah. It I did that before why. when the rain came. Wait, does that mean I should get up? Ah! Uh... Okay, I can see why you need to find shelter now. Ah! <laughs> That is torrential. Oh my god, the world's falling apart. It's getting worse and worse. Can I go out there? I don't know. I wouldn't. Oh, it's getting louder. I can hear it. <laughs> Look at that. Well, I guess now's as good a time as any to just talk about it as you can. Ezekiel is made by Science Saru, they also made Devil Man Cry Baby, they also made Nerd of Short Walk On Girl, they also made Blue Over the Wall, and you should watch every single one of them because they are amazing. Yes.
the director is Masaki Iwasa. He also directed one of my favorite episodes of Space Dandy. It's the one where Dandy accidentally teleports his head to another planet. It, he also directed that one at, oh, 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 it got too heavy. Man, that is bad rain. I wouldn't call that rain. We made it so far. I guess next time it starts raining, just go out there, because I guess I just don't die until... Or do I die when the rain touches me? I don't know. I'm a slug. I thought slugs thrive in rain. But yeah, uh, Masaki Yusa... I guess not when it's that bad. Masaki Yusa also directed um, Tatami Galaxy, and he also directed Ping Pong the Animation. I haven't seen either of those two, but... I do, really, I do really want to watch Tatami Galaxy, because that looks really, really good. From what I can tell, it's like the beta of Night of Short Walk On Girl, and it looks great. So uh, that's probably going to be the next thing we watch together, right? Yes. Uh, but yeah, Masuki Yusa also directed that episode of Adventure Time about the food chain. If you've ever seen that one, I probably have, but it, I, I it's don't the think really I've ever got to watching the, it, Adventure Time in order. It was it, just whenever it was on. It was well, well, I mean, it was a guest animator episode, so it was non-canon. Ah. It was a one-off episode where, like, they're teaching people about the food chain. Like, literally as simple as that. Hmm. And like Finn and Jake turn into birds, and then they turn into bigger birds, and then they turn into like cells and I've plants. I've seen and stuff. parts of that episode. Uh, yes. C does it does it seem very nice to short walk on girly to you? Uh, it was a long time ago that I saw any of that episode, but ah, oh, useless. <laughs> Sorry, go on. What I'm saying is, I need to watch it again. That's fair enough. You should watch Devil Man Cry Baby, it's pretty good. Yes. It's only 10 episodes long as well. It does have some weird scenes in it. Like, okay, the, the science Saru tend to... They, they, they make somewhat strange decisions when it comes to storytelling. Like, everything is segmented in a very weird way. In what way? Well, you know, like, they don't do traditional storytelling, like, every... A lot of the time, storytelling is just, here's this thing, here's this thing, here's this thing, now here's some story stuff. Oh. You know what I mean? I think so, yeah. Well, you know, kind of like how Night is Short Walk on Girl, it's, um... Actually, you know, I don't want to say anything because I don't want to spoil it. Um, take Loot Over the Wall, where... Yes. It just kind of meanders around like various different plot points and like just kind of comes together at the end. Oh yeah. Like it I, has the it I has get the what you mean. it has like the same basic premise, but like it doesn't have like this one consistent flowing story. It kind of has a lot of like weird one-off bits, like when the giant fish dad appears and he like just does that stuff with the fish. And it's like, I mean, that was a fun and entertaining sequence, but it had no plot relevance whatsoever. So he. I imagine he could probably catch people off guard with that kind of storytelling, but personally, I think it kind of works because it really feels like it plays to the strong suits of, um... Actually, you know, I don't know what I'm talking about. I was going to say it plays to the strong suits of animation, but that doesn't mean anything. Mm. Uh, the... He does make some, like, really weird, like, decisions sometimes that leads to scenes being really weird. Because, like... But that's the fun of it, isn't it? Oh, okay, I I'll give you an example from Devilman Crybaby. Because, like, I, I don't even know what the point of it was, but... There is... I mean, someone's gonna probably point it out, but... There's a scene where, like, a girl... Starts thinking about one of the characters, and then she starts masturbating. And oh no. Uh, no. What? I'm already worried. <laughs> it, it's 
honestly, that's pretty much the extent of what, like, actually happens. But the thing is, is that when she starts masturbating, instead of, like, her doing moaning noises, it's replaced with donkey noises. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't, I don't know what? what, I don't know why they did that. <laughs> but <laughs> it, I, it, it did make me laugh. Ah, oh wait, I can't rest. I need to find food. It did make me laugh because, like, ah. Oh. oh no. Okay, that's not so bad. Yeep. Ah! Yeek. Oh wait. Oh me, I got one, I got one. Nom, nom, nom. Ah! Ah. Ah. Oh, it happened so suddenly as well, it really gets here. Oh, I was so close. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll make this like my last attempt. <laughs> then I'll probably have to get good off screen. <laughs> but yeah, for whatever re for whatever reason, she starts masturbating and then like she starts moaning, but you don't actually hear the moaning. Instead, you just hear like donkey noises and I'm just like <laughs> I don't know why they did that but it makes me laugh because honestly I, one thing I've never understood about like sex and porn and stuff is the idea that like moaning is or, like horny and arousing it just sounds absolutely ridiculous to me and Honestly, replacing like moaning noises with donkey sounds is like exact. That to me is what like that is what I hear when I hear like a girl moaning. It just sounds silly. You know what I mean? I think so. Have an opinion already, damn it! Never. <laughs> What's the point in speaking if you won't reply? Uh, what about uh? Azo Ken, how, how do you feel about the previous episode? You mean the last episode? Yes. Hold on, hold on. The most recent. Dinner! Yes, got it. Yes. Um, oh, nom, nom, more, nom, more, nom. more, 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 um, more. Nom, 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 <laughs> I do like the animation of just like smashing it against my face. Right, there we go. Can I have any? Hooray! Yes. I, ass I assume the goal of this game is to get to as many of those safe spots as possible and upgrade myself as much as possible. Um, yes, Ezekhead. Ezekhead's great. Everyone should watch it. Yes. It is great fun, and the different art styles they use for different situations are wonderful. And in a world of extremely trash animes that all look exactly the same, it is an enormous breath of fresh air. And honestly, like, to me, it, it, it really is the kind of thing that you can only do in an anime, and it takes full advantage of it, and I love it. And the animation is very creative, very unique. And the one I I do have some criticism ag criticisms against it though. There is one scene in one episode where they play the exact same little animation cycle over and over and over again. And after the sixth time, you're like, why oh, yes. are you not cutting away from this? I remember this now. <laughs> you hated that so much. <laughs> Because I was like, why? <laughs> why? 
I think at that point I just kind of stopped paying attention. I was like, okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. This is it made you it made you completely tune out. Uh I do have like a couple of other smaller criticisms for it. Like there are a lot of scenes in like a lot of like more simpler scenes in certain episodes where the characters are just very weirdly drawn. Uh it's a lot more inconsistent compared to usual um science sorrow standards. Um uh, another weird thing about it Ooh, where am I going now? Another weird thing about it is um the music. Uh okay, here's the weird thing. Music, great. Nothing against it. The tracks are awesome. I love them. I... Uh... Oh, I see now. I need to stay alive for long enough to go through these certain cycles. Um, but, there was not enough tracks. Not enough tracks at all. Like, there's three or four soundtracks in particular that will play in every episode without fail and it got real stale after a while. Yeah, the imagination one is pretty constant. <laughs> like that'll play like at least once an episode, maybe even twice. I mean I do like I do like how there's a specific theme for when they're using their imagination. Well I suppose but I kinda... do see what you mean. It kind of feels almost like a Mario level. It's like, ah, oh. it's like here's the underwater, le here's the underwater music, <laughs> here's the daytime music. So for like Ezekin, it's like here's the imagination music, here's the um, discussion of work music. Here, well, the discussion of ideas music. Here's the having a wander about outside music. Here's the ooh, something's interesting is happening music. It kind of reminded me of the second season of uh, One Punch Man, where there were... Oh well, no. Where there were like some new soundtracks, but for the most part it was constant reuse of like some of the best tracks of the... Uh... Ah, you bastard! Oh! <laughs> it didn't even take me 30 seconds to die. <laughs> okay, okay, last try, last try. Honestly, I really hated the overuse of like music in One Punch Man because the yeah. amount of the amount of times they played the um... sadness, yeah, yeah, constant. <laughs> <Dude, Constantly. laughs> it's like what happened to I it? I remember this. <laughs> Look at that thing. <laughs> Just like I remember this being a really powerful piece of music. Honestly, it was the, it's the equivalent of the imagination track from Ezuken. It's like. <laughs> Yeah, I know you got more tracks. <laughs> you mean... gonna play any of them? Also, uh... I I quite like I like I quite like it with the imagination one because it's like, oh yes, we're getting to this sequence. It does get you pumped up every time, but I just felt it could have been a mm -hmm. bit more variety. The One yeah. Punch Man season. Two... Oh, I... I I feel like One Punch Man is... season two also bugged me because. It played soundtracks that were very specifically used for like one or two key moments, like yeah, that weird like space, um, like tense space sciencey track that played when uh, the aliens arrived. Mm -hmm. Like that just got used when they were fighting some like random squid monster, and I'm like, that just doesn't. It's just it just doesn't feel right. Yeah, I mean, I feel like with the imagination music versus sadness is a bit of an unfair comparison because imagination music is for a very specific type of sequence whereas with them overusing sadness it was literally just uh well it's a sad scene so play it up it people wasn't... like this song it wasn't even like i mean one punch man was absolutely like worse in that regard because in season two, it was like every time Genesis was on screen, it was like, let's just play Genesis theme. <laughs> oh, come on, this is unfair. That was really dumb. Um, every time. Uh, what was I going to say? Yeah, just, just any time there was like a one-off piece of music from the original, it just got reused in like a random scene mm -hmm. in like One Punch Man season two. And I really yeah. hated that. One Punch Man of Season like, 2 is like that awful. That point where 
they play sadness, but it's in that really triumphant tone. Like now that it's had totally time, unearned. now now totally that it's unearned. okay, now that it's had time to simmer, a lot of people are like, "Oh no, it's it's actually it wasn't that bad." And I'm like, "Yeah, it was. It really was. It was bad. <laughs> it was really bad." Like now that the um, even DVD... even if you remove the context of the the first season, it was still bad. Okay, the DVD. Never forget Mega Mind Saitama. <laughs> the DVD of the um, um has removed the weird like blurring that happened whenever like characters were like fighting. So now people are all like, "Oh, now that it's clear, it's um, it's good." And I'm like, "No, it's still not good. It's." It's more visually distinguishable, but it's not good. There we go. That was a close one. But, uh, outside of, like, uh, you, you just can't compare to Season 1. And a lot of people are like, well, yeah, but, like, Season 1's never going to happen again because of the specific circumstances. And I'm like, look at all the other really amazingly animated shows that get made. It is not impossible. <laughs> You're never going to get all the same staff back again, but it's not impossible. You can still have a well-animated show. It's the fact that it was handed off to JC staff. Give it to Studio Bones. Yeah, I, well, whew, even then, it depends who in Studio Bones gets it. Because I don't know if I'm going to get flack for this or not, but Carolyn Tuesday, yeah, it was an alright anime, but... I don't know that one. Um, honestly, what really attracted me to it was the opening. The opening is amazing. If the whole show looked and animated like that opening, it would have been so much better. But um, as it was, um, it still looked visually distinct, but for the most part, the animation quality really was not that good. I think most of the time, the characters were animated on fours. And um, when, they, when they were like doing the singing, which is where most of the animation, like, goodness comes into play. Um, it does look good, but there's not that much of an effort to actually, like, lip-sync it. Which is bizarre, because no matter what language you watch it in, the songs are in English. Uh, wait, which, which hole did I come weird. out Weird. Oh, honestly, the weirdest thing was, re was watching it in Japanese, and then just having these, like, clearly Japanese characters suddenly turn into, like, amazing American singers. <laughs> But um, it also just very stylistically, it felt more like they turned it into a basic anime look, despite the fact that it was still visually distinguishing, like they made compromises. Because I'm not going to lie, the backgrounds in the opening of Carol and Tuesday look amazing. Those are like, oh man, if the backgrounds in the show looked like that, that would have been incredible. But they looked more like just sort of generic anime backgrounds. And... Uh, the singing, the animation on that was like good for the most part, but there were some times where you could very much tell that the characters were being divided up into these really obvious layers. Wait, what am I doing? Did these both lead out into the same? Oh, oh, no, no. Wait, so what is the point of this room? Oh, I can go further up. Yeah, uh, honestly, the best. But but overall, yeah, yeah it was all right. It was not Bones as finest though, which baffled me because this was supposed to be their like twenty year anniversary anime. Hmm, that's weird. But generally, yeah, Bones do make really good stuff, like Soul Eater, Full Metal Alchemist. Um, ah, uh, yeah. Wow, rude. Full Metal Alchemist, Mob Psycho, uh, Space Dandy, uh, Wolf's Brain. That was their first ever anime. Um, uh, I don't think a lot of people know about it, but it's actually really good. And the artwork is really, really clean and detailed, which is huh. quite impressive. I think I think we're going to have to leave it there. Yeah. I don't want to embarrass myself any that further. Is... That is enough enraging the fans of this game. Uh, what do you think of this game just by watching it? Um, it looks incredibly confusing. I still don't really know what's going on. <laughs>
but I really like the artwork in it. The artwork is lovely. Yeah, that's that's about all I can say really. I mean, it's if I have an all nighter and nothing else to do, I think this would be the perfect game to play if you just want to smash your head against the wall endlessly trying to get from point A to B. Because from what I could tell from that weird cutoff gate I got to that had one of the symbols, uh, there are places that you can't go to unless you've rested a certain amount of times without dying. Yeah, it seems very much a get good sort of sort of game. Yeah, so uh uh bye. Goodbye.